Hi, I'm Dr. Daud Waid, and today we are going to start our senior secondary course, Mass Communication, which is the code 335. Now, mass communication is one of my favorite topics and chapters to deal with because it really gives you a head start into humanities, into journalism, into the world of advertisement, the entire social media, a lot of it if you understand it well. Now, as we always do, we'll record small modules with an introduction to each of these chapters. Today, I'm going to start from the beginning, an overview of what mass communication is, how many chapters, and where do we study. Mass communication essentially is developed into big, big modules. So if you look at it, there are three modules, three in the second book, and then there are two more. Each module has four chapters under it. So three, three, six plus two, eight modules with four chapters. Very simple calculation, 28 chapters. Don't be awed by it. Chapters are sometimes very small and very easy to understand. Today, we are taking up the introduction, the first chapter to what is communication. One of the key questions that is often asked, and I'm always trying to do the in-text question, why do we communicate? Well, today, if you look at the world itself, we communicate to exchange ideas. We communicate to inform, entertain, or educate. Remember these three key things, I, E, and E. What are we going to do? We are communicating to inform, educate, and we are going to entertain. So, for example, no, very simple. If I have to inform somebody, what do I use for information? News. So an example of information is news. Simple. Another thing is also misinformed. Today there's fake news, WhatsApp University. And these, as I tell you, are also examples. If the same question is two marks, you just write IE, inform, educate, entertain. If the question is six marks, you have so many things to do. Information comes from newspapers, magazines. Today, misinformation is a concept. And this is what we're looking into. What is misinformation? As we look further, how do you look at the simple means of education? This is what we're looking into. So if you, and I just remove my annotation here. And so you can see inform, misinform. This is one part of this entire idea. Then we are also talking about simple concepts. We used to communicate to buy and sell, which is nothing but advertisement in today's world. It's again another form of advertisement. You see news, there's e-commerce, there's normal commerce, trade and barter happening, buy and sell. Then remember, educate is the word I use. So what do teachers do? They advise, they teach, and we learn. And you don't have to remember everything. Remember five main points, why we communicate. These are the reasons we communicate our message to. So define the term communication, very simple. Communication as a term, as I said, is an idea. If I have to clear this, I to close this, come down. This is the entire chapter. So communication is a message that has to be understood. Communication is a social interaction through messages. It is the simple form of communication. And sometimes I encourage you as an examiner also, what examiner looks. You draw two boxes. What is communication? Box one says you are a sender. So I put S here. And the other part is the receiver, R. And then there's a line in between, which is the message. And what do you do? All of it is within a medium. Or this is the medium. Medium could be print medium, oral medium. Sorry, my, my spelling is, you know, my writing is horrible. I wish I could use a pad. But this is what we do. Quickly, let's jump down to Q&A and in-text question. And... The queen is communication is a method message misunderstood. No, it is a message that has to be understood. So it is false. Social interaction through messages communication. Yes, absolutely correct. Sharing of experience cannot be called communication. This is exactly what communication is. So sharing of experience is communication. So this is false as well. If we go to communication, there are key means of communication as what are the five senses that we use? Five reasons we communicate with. And this is quickly. We communicate through a lot of, hold on. I'll quickly go to the, the example of an elephant. So these are different human emotions we use to communicate with. So what are the five senses you use to communicate with? Well, eyes. So your sight is a sense. Ears, auditory, oral is a sense. Tongue, so taste. Then your skin, touch. And finally, your nose, you smell. Use these 
as different human emotions. So these are all using non-verbal emotions. What is non-verbal communication? Without saying a word, you're doing non-verbal communication. Traffic cough is an excellent example. What do you mean by traffic cough? You see, does he shout your name? No. He is using non-verbal communication using hand gestures and body movements. Or when you say namaste, you know, it's a greeting so popular across. So you're using another form of non-verbal body gestures. So what do you mean by non-verbal communication? Non-verbal communication is by conveying without using any words. This is basically non-verbal communication. So without and using hand gestures. I give you examples of a traffic signal. I give you example of people, you know, uh, using so many theater actors, mime artists, all of these, they use non-verbal. So five senses and non-verbal is what we have talked about. Now, in communication, one of the two key that we do is oral and written communication. Very simple. What are the means of oral and written communication? If I look at your book, let me quickly go to oral is when you speak, elocution, debates, extempos, poems, all of these are oral communication, public speaking, you know, preaching, all of this are oral form of communication. So what are the key advantages of oral form of communication? It is very spontaneous and very natural. It is easy to understand. It is verbal communication. It is also supported by non-verbal. So a good speaker, if you listen to some lectures online, TED Talks, some preachers, they will use the hand gesture, face gesture. So non-verbal communication is a added support of communication tool. And it develops close relationship between the speaker and the listener. What are the disadvantages of verbal communication, oral communication? Well, you know, so words are spoken and not permanent. It is not written down. It's not like a tattoo. It's it's a it's just listen. Then it is often forgotten. And non-verbal communication that supports oral may be understood, may not be understood. For example, so many times you say something without seeing the person, you may not be able to communicate or convey the idea. Well, written communication print media, a lot of text that you do, WhatsApp messages, all of these are written communication. What are the advantages? Of course, it is permanent. Yeah, people could read it. It is long lasting. It can be used. It is spreading ideas. Lot of documentation today. All of it is written. The biggest disadvantage is it has to be written down. It is consuming of time. But Still today, written communication, the textbook you're reading is written communication. All these are written communication. Letters, circulars, newspaper, news magazines, newsletters, handbills, posters, book, bulletins, billboards. All of this is a form of written communication. Quickly, we'll do a Q&A. Writing has given man history. Absolutely. From cave writing, this is important. Paper and printing were developed before writing. No, it is wrong. So I'll only color the, the correct one. Writing is a shared activity. No, it is individual activity. WW, World Wide Web and computers are given new style. Yes, emails, Facebook posts, Instagram, all of it that you write. Instagram is also, now pictorial will come to that. Radio is a mean of written. No, it is oral communication. Very quickly, as we quickly end this chapter, there are two main types of communication. If you're talking individually, you know, you're talking among yourself, you're talking personal, it is intrapersonal. What is the word? Intra. And if you're talking to a group of people, it is interpersonal. Very simple, right? So intra is something like, you know, you're just talking to yourself, you're doing self-motivation, you are also, you know, pepping yourself. Inter, as an inter-school competition, sab log mil jate hai. So intercommunication is with a conversation to a lot of people group. Now, intercommunication, interpersonal communication can be formal or informal. Formal is simple. You know, think of formal as miss. What is this? M-I-S-S. -S. M is meeting. I is interview, sales and seminar. So, interpersonal communication is formal, which is meeting, interview, sales and seminar. You can't miss it, right? Informal is private, family, corridor, co casual, canteen talks. All of it is informal. This is the forms of communication as we are talking about. That is all that this chapter has. It's a quick, quick first chapter. 
group communication is a part of you know again intra interpersonal public communication is interpersonal teacher speaking is interpersonal all these are examples of interpersonal so let's quickly do the in text question situation in which a batsman is talking to himself i don't know how much you follow it is said that virendra sehwag used to talk to himself marcus labuchin australian cricketer it is a it is a simple intra conversation between two people is called inter very nice conversation in a canteen is casual so informal in dash communication people know each other in group communication interpersonal communication so you can add group and interpersonal together public communication generally many people receive message from one person so if you listen to you know good motivational coaches this is what our chapter number 1 is all about all the best make sure you know all of this once you understand this chapter long answers are very easy you can just write down you can review this and this will become an easy start for yourself thank you so much all the best